go to and get a great shot. Welcome to another Wandering Huckleberries uh, episode. Enjoy. just thought I'd share with you my uh, glamorous working lifestyle towing a caravan around for work. Um, it's not really living the dream. Normally you're in a caravan park uh, all by yourself or there's one or two people or maybe some um, people that are living under a tarp somewhere. But here we are at Mount Isa and this is the caravan park. And uh, it's like there's three caravans here so actually not going to be a, uh, a big social night or anything like that um, it's a few kilometers from town so there's nothing to eat I didn't bring anything so I've got to uh, unhitch and go and drive into town ah uh, well living the dream Just driving along uh, between Mount Isa and Ajara and saw this little uh, cracker of a campsite. Have a look at this. Check it out. Ajara Dam. I haven't got time to camp here, but wow. Downtown Ajara. From the middle of the road. Well, last time I came through this way, um, leaving Birdsville bound for Baduri, we went right past these ruins, and I thought I'd uh, stop and have a look. So let's have a, uh, a quick look, but uh, it's only going to be quick because I've got to continue on into Birdsville for work. Karoi Homestead Ruins. Built in 1877 of local limestone, Hector and Norman Wilson. It survives an important link with early settlement as evidence of the hardship experienced by early pioneers. Hardship? Who'd want to live out here? God, of course it was hard. Anyway, the ruins state of the homestead complements the desolation of the place. You don't say. Wow. Okay. It's like uh, people have had a yeah, I'll go at uh, carving your own initials and things into it. Uh, I'll just have a quick pop through here. Yeah, every man and his dog has carved a bit in here. I won't be leaving a mark. That's desecration. Oh, well, here you go. There's the fireplace. And all right, it's the backyard. I guess the swimming pool was here somewhere. There we go. Well, more visitors, so um, hop back in the car and head on to Birdsville. <laughs> Five months after the big red bash, I'm standing in the middle of the caravan park.
have a look around. Not a soul. Just myself. Just walking from the caravan park over to the Birdsville Bakery because the pub in the background there they've closed the uh, restaurant for renovations so you got to take your own to the bakery because um, yeah they're not licensed but you can take your own um, I'm the only one in the caravan park I think the only other people here are locals don't know how many people are going to be in the bakery. This uh, bakery. Um, might just be me. My two beers. Then it's back to the, uh, the van. And uh, try and make an early start tomorrow. Before it gets too hot. Because I've got uh, that 379 buck, 379 kilometres of dirt to do. Back to Windora. And that's probably where I'll... Uh, I'll be staying tomorrow night. But for now, Birdsville Bakery. Cheers. Yeah, g'day. I'm uh, with Brett from Off Track Wines. I was out in uh, Birdsville again for work. And uh, you guys know me as a, uh, a craft beer man. But, um, Every now and then I don't mind a, uh, a wine, but it's got to be a good one. And uh, so Brett and his offsider were out here in, uh, in Birdsville. Um, and uh, they gave us a sample of some of their, their wines. Off track wines. The Outback is Calling is one of the names. But uh, I'm going to let Brett tell you a little bit about the wines and how off track wines came about. So we're... We've been part of the wine industry in South Australia for over 20 years and we were always frustrated with carrying the bottles in and out of the desert on our big expedition style trips and so we thought there has to be a better way of the packaging and immediately we thought of cans and it's been about a six year uh, mission to get to this point where we're happy with the product in the, wine, in, in the can. It's the same wine that we put in our bottles but we've just put it into a can and we've rebranded it as off track. So you're a winery, you've got a winery background. That's right. And other wines. That's right. So we're yeah, a reasonable sized winery. Uh, we do 60,000 cases per year. We export to 26 different countries. Oh wow. Um, but this is our new product and our new brand. Um, and it's really designed at the adventure, the off -door, outdoor, the um, off So like here at the Big Red Bash uh, next year, yep. um, is the local pub likely to have some of this? I, I think so. We've, we caught up with Ben, the manager at the pub, um, yesterday, and uh, yeah, I think we can certainly. We're looking at doing the Big Red Bash, the Birdsville Races, uh, getting it out into the, the uh, travelling community. And, and, and so, what varieties have you got here? So, we'll start at the. We've got a, a sparkling white wine, which is a Prosecco. Yeah, had some of that last night. It was really nice. Not bad for a guy that usually drinks Marlborough white wines. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Uh, <laughs> usually drink the uh, New Zealand uh, wines, but um, I've got to say, I was really impressed. Yeah, it's a it's a really nice, you know, it's an Italian varietal. It's a it's a beautiful drinking wine. Uh, in the bottle, it's one of our biggest sellers. It's a, yeah, uh, we call it, uh, in the bottle, it's Bolle Felici, which means happy bubbles. Happy bubbles. Yeah. Well, my wife would be happy with those bubbles. Yeah. Wouldn't you, Michelle? <laughs> so then we've got the uh, white wine, which is a, um, a drier style. It's a Vermentino, and again, another Italian style wine. And it's blended with a little bit of Pinot Grigio just to round off the fruit flavours. Um, then we've got the rosé, which is a Grenache based rosé. Round it off again with a bit of Cabernet fruit to really get that nice fruit uh, tannins on the back of the tongue. Then we've got the red wine, which is the Shiraz. It's actually a mostly a Langhorn Creek Shiraz. And uh, we had some of that last night too, we yeah? We did, yeah. Very nice. Yep. 
and then we move on to the the nice one to finish out the night is our sparkling red which is um, has a little bit of fortified so that we can that it holds the uh, carbonation holds the bubbles and it's just a sensational drink around the campfire with a bit of dark chocolate which i think we had a bit of last we night we did we did it was yeah. a uh, good night so you buy it as a, a 12 pack yep. of one variety it's not a mixed variety yeah pack. 12 pack of um so the one, one like. variety that's yep. right uh, at, we are traveling around the country doing the full drive uh, adventure shows caravan and camping shows and at the shows, we are actually offering for people to mix the packs. Okay. And in Adelaide, that was a massive hit. So what's the next show that you're going to be at? Uh, looks like we'll probably do the uh, Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show in February, March. And Look then for uh, Brett and Anna. Anna at okay. uh, the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show. Yeah. Um, and then we'll probably head up to Brisbane as well. Okay. Well, next we can see one. up there. Yeah. And uh, we've got a bigger HJ45 troop carrier, which is... Um, a 1980 troop carrier, which is a sort of promotional vehicle. And it's all branded up, is it? It's all branded up with off-track wines, and look out for that on the tracks. It's a, it's a bit of a weapon. Okay, well, I expect to see a few of these uh, at the uh, Big Red Bash next year. I know um, our group, our uh, convoy, will uh, look it up and uh, take some of these with us because you can't take glass into the Big Red Bash, so Absolutely. this is the thing. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yep, yeah. all the best. So the Wandering Huckleberries have teamed up with Off-Track Wines to get our viewers a discount off these wine varieties in a can. So simply head to their website at www.offtrackwines.com.au, put in our discount code, Huck, that's H-U-C-K, Huck with a H, and enjoy Off-Track Wines in a can. Wandering Huckleberries. time I'm all on my lonesome no convoy no party no lots of people at first just me and it's a bit windy so next time I'm back here probably in about three months again and a bit work well not here at Birdsville and then again in uh, in July for the 10th anniversary of the Big Red Bash. From the news, from... The hole through the hill. Uh, about 80 miles to the south of Balbindora. If you follow this arrow, you've got a bit of binoculars, you can actually see the hole on the hill without binoculars. But, um, here you go. The hole in the hill. Wow. You remember how uh, busy it was at uh, Windora Pub when we were here last? Well, that's where I am, behind the pub. Check it out. And this is why you don't want to work in remote areas in the summer. You're on your own. Pub closed at five. Lucky you've got some of these. Yeah, don't come to Windora on a Sunday because um, it's closed. Pub's closed, up across the road. It was closed last night. The cafe's closed. Uh, I got fuel yesterday, but I'm going down to see if I can get a nice coffee or something, but I think it's closed too. So if I didn't get fuel, I'd be uh, here until Monday until something opens. <sighs> oh well, a few things just not wanting to work properly today. Getting a uh, error code on my um, Red Arc uh, Toe Pro Elite um, brake control, having problems with cameras. Oh, just the little things, you know, just frustrating. Uh, where to stop tonight? I don't know. I'll keep driving. I'll find somewhere. I think, I think I love you. But I wanna know for sure. Don't have to go all the way to Birdsville to see your first sand dune. Right here, between Wilby and Windora, is a red sand dune. 
All right, I just got to the Charlotte Plains turnoff. Um, this is about uh, three hours from Nindy Gully. So we turn in here. See this sign? You can turn on uh, UHF 26 so they can hear you down at the homestead, but it's a 15 kilometer drive down to the homestead. Um, and uh, there it is down there. It's the 15 kilometer drive. But apparently this is uh, one of the best campsites you can go to. So unfortunately I'm not staying because I've got uh, work to do. I've got to be at uh, other places. But we'll be back here in June. Charlotte Plains. Looking forward to it. This is Wallam Creek. In fact, this is Wallam Creek Campgrounds. Free camping. Beside the river at Ballon. Plenty of space. There's even some uh, basic toilets here. Sorry about the wind. At uh, Wallam Creek and an old cemetery. There's lots of really old graves in here and, and a few um, kids ones too. From 1900, 1899. Some history around here. And some hard times too by the look of it. But if you ignore the uh, cemetery and just camp down by the river, this is quite stunning. We're in the town of Ballon. Um, don't think there's too much stuff in Ballon, but I'll go and have a look anyway. And it's just an easy walk down to uh, the local Ballon Hotel. Don't think that they're going to have too many craft beers in there. So maximum number of campers is 100. Remember that one, Wallam Creek. Exiting the uh, Wallam Creek campgrounds. And you've got a dump point as well. So quite a convenient little camp. I'll remember this one. Cracker of a campsite here at the Nindy Gully pub. You can see the Nindy Gully in the background. And there's the river. You gotta have, be happy here. Got a beer, there's the river. The pub's back up there somewhere. And a little walking track. It's tranquil. Tranquil is today's word. Tranquil. This is out the back of the Nindy Gully. So, in June, when everybody's going to the Big Red, this is going, Big Red Bash that is, at Birdsville, this is going to be really busy. It's my beer. Don't tell anyone, it's one of those northern things. Ah. Okay, so, where do you think I am now? If you see it a racetrack, well, you'd be half right. It's actually a go-kart track. And it's a go-kart track at the back of the Sandy Creek Pub. Um, believe it or not, that thing up there says Sandy Creek Pub. And it's sitting on top of the tree, and the pub is behind the rest of the trees over there. So I am set up in this area. Luckily enough, there's no go-karts running at the moment, so um, there'll be plenty of rest. So I'll go over and have a look at the menu and have a beer in a minute. Um, yeah, all set up. Plenty of room here for a group. Maybe our group. That's a plan. Now it's good to find um, landmarks in these remote places so that uh, you know exactly where you are and particularly where you can get a feed. Ah, yeah, Gundawindi. 
homeward bound. So I put a deposit down on a new tow rig. Um, not gonna get it until May, June next year. Like everything, I've gotta wait. So I'm waiting. In the meantime, I'm uh, researching mods and bits and pieces that uh, I can do, but we're going to a higher level of luxury, I must say, and um, a very capable tow rig, um, as proven by many others before me. So what is it that you think we're getting? If you've been paying attention, you might, uh, might already know. Anyway, um, drop a comment in and uh, let us know what it is you think we're getting and uh, what you think uh, are the essential mods that we should uh, do. If you didn't know what I do for a job, uh, it's probably clear just by looking at the uh, car. I build and maintain TV and radio transmitter sites in remote communities all across Australia. So the van is my work office and my motel room. And um, yeah, it's fully tax deductible. But we like to get away and do uh, some uh, private travel as well, as you well know. Anyway, on my way back from, uh, what's this, 5,125 kilometers uh, in the last two weeks. That's a lot. Another epic little trip that comes to an end. Like and subscribe. Wondering huckleberries.